Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Alexa Farragin. And I'm Dominique DiNardo, and here's your news now. Gas prices have reached an all-time low of almost $2 per gallon. Let's take a look at what students and professors have to say about this. A lot of people wonder why the price of gas has gone down so much recently. Well, for people who have had me for economics, they know that the answer is supply and demand. Um, supply and demand is a model that we use to describe markets uh, that uh, helps us understand why the price of things like oil and gas go up and down over time. Uh, one reason that the price of gas has gone down is that uh, more and more companies have been drilling for oil. Some of you may have heard of uh, something called fracking, which is a new drilling technique uh, that has caused really a, a big growth in the domestic oil industry. So there are more and more companies that are drilling for oil. Uh, that's increasing the supply and that tends to lower the price. My credit card has definitely noticed the difference in gas prices as of recent. Um, they, for the past like month of January, they definitely plateaued at the lowest I've ever seen them, like 215 or 211 is the lowest I've ever gotten it, and now it's back up to like 235. Low gas prices help everybody. So if you think about paying, you know, maybe half of what you were paying a week or 50% less uh, that you were paying a week on gas, that helps. Uh, and so sometimes when they look at the, the macro economy, uh, they look at the lower prices of gas as something that will help the economy because everybody now has a little bit more money that they can spend on food or going out to eat or something like that. So it's helping a lot of people out. We have a lot of happy customers, college students. They're coming in happy. Everyone seems to have a smile. Always compliment us on our prices. Coming back up now, it's because they're switching um, they're switching over to a summer grade, which is a lot cheaper, but you have to switch over your tanks, take out all the detergents, which causes time, causes money to go up in fleet. So it'll go up around 20, 30 more cents by summertime. Again, this is a, a good example of economics affecting us every day. Uh, one of the things that I like about all the things that I teach, but, but economics is certainly no exception. Uh, that we're impacted by economics all the time. So as we, again, see the price of oil going up or down uh, or the price of lots of different goods, uh, if you are fortunate enough to take a microeconomics class here, uh, in the future when you graduate, you can look back and say, oh yeah, I think I, I think I understand why the prices are changing. I think from anyone's perspective, it definitely gives you more money to play with um, for whatever you, whatever else you want to use it for. Cabrini students, wondering how you're doing in your classes? Beginning this semester, all professors are required to turn in midterm grades for every course. Keep your eye open in the next couple weeks. College students were murdered this week in both Pennsylvania and North Carolina. Millersville University students were stunned when the student was murdered on campus this week. A Kennett Square man was charged with strangling and beating his girlfriend to death in a dorm room. According to Philly.com, Carly Hall was found dead in her room after a fight with her boyfriend. A vigil was held on Monday outside of the Student Memorial Center on campus. Three Muslim students at the University of North Carolina were shot to death near the campus this week. Police have arrested the alleged shooter and are investigating the motive. The Pennsylvania Horticultural Society's pop-up beer garden will be returning on February 14th indoors at the shops at Liberty Place on Chestnut Street in Philadelphia. Admission is free and you are able to pay as you go. And that was your trip around the block. Let's check in with Howard Blake and Jason Williams to see what's new in sports. Thanks Alexa. Once again, I'm Howard Blake. And I'm Jason Williams. And in today's sports segment, we're actually going to be talking about All-Star Weekend. But before we dive into that, we're actually going to get caught up on campus sports. And first, we're actually going to highlight the men's and women's swim teams. Um, they both traveled to Grove City College this weekend in order to participate in the AMCC Conference Championships. The women's team is actually led by Christina Melikior, and they're actually looking to repeat as champions for the second year in a row. And the men's team is being led by sophomore Todd Walker, and they look for their first championship. So. Um, Good luck to them this weekend. Now, what about the men's and women's basketball team? So as you know, Howard, both the men's and women's basketball teams are rolling. On the men's side, as always, Aaron Walton Moss is outstanding. He's running through the conference, and he's running through the nation. 
He was nominated last week for the ECAC Player of the Week. And to everyone's surprise, freshman Jair Green was nominated as the Player of the Week for the ECAC. They're number one in the conference, and they're looking to go into the conference playoffs at number one. So big ups to the men's basketball team. Now on the women's side of basketball, the women were ranked number 25 last week in the USA Today Top 25 polls. This week, they're ranked number 25 in the D3 Hoops Top 25 polls. They're making noise all, all across the nation, and they're making noise in the conference. They're number one in the conference heading into the playoffs. Big ups to the women. They're rolling. Roll Cavs. All right. Well, great stuff by both teams, and good luck to them for the rest of the season. But now, what everyone's been waiting for, All-Star Weekend is finally upon us. And um, one of the biggest attractions is actually the three-point contest this year, which is different from most years because everyone wants to see the All-Star Game, the dunk contest, skills dunk. challenge. All, the celebrity All-Star Game. Exactly. It's always something different, but this year, like you said, it's a three-point contest. Right, a lot of big names in it this year. Now, who is your pick to win it all? I mean, you know my guy. My guy is in it, Kyrie Irving, 2013 three-point contest champion, shooting 41% from the three-point line, 47% from the uh, field. Kyrie Irving outstanding. He's my dark horse to win. I know you probably got Steph Curry or Klay Thompson winning it. Oh, most definitely. I'm going with the Splash Brothers, one of the two. Um, definitely Steph Curry is my number one favorite, but I feel like if anyone can beat him out, it's going to be Klay Thompson. But like I said, I'm sticking with Steph, shooting around 40% from three. But even though it may not be the high 40s like everyone's used to, uh, the type of shots he takes, the three-point shots he takes, his percentage is definitely going to be a little lower, but 40 is still outstanding in the I mean, NBA. Kyrie's shooting a higher percentage. And not to mention, you go with the guy Steph. Kyrie beat Steph two years ago for the three-point contest That's champion. So, I mean, I'm going with my guy, Kyrie Irving. Like you said, you got your guy. Yeah. Dark horse, everyone's dark horse probably Kyle, Kyle Korver. Yeah, he's right. shooting over 50%, 52% to be exact. Yeah, so. so He's having a great year, and, you know, he'll be one of the sleepers, you know. And also, don't sleep on James Harden. Even though he's not a three-point shooter, a scorer, I was about to say, a scorer, if he gets hot, he's going to light it up. It'll be a great All-Star weekend, but you already know who's winning. Kyrie Irving. Steph Curry. Kyrie Irving. All right. And that's this week's sports news. Let's send it back to Dominique at the news desk. After ISIS's brutal burning alive of Jordan's Air Force pilot last week, airstrikes were included in Jordan's methods of retaliation. ISIS released a statement claiming such strikes killed one of its American prisoners. NBC Nightly News managing editor and anchor Brian Williams has been suspended for six months without pay. According to Fox News, Williams admitted to falsely reporting about the helicopter he was in during the Iraq War. He claimed to have been shot down by a grenade when in fact it was the helicopter before his that was attacked. William's spot as the 23rd most trustworthy person in the country has now dropped to 835. Williams has since apologized and hopes to regain his credibility. Cabrini College recently hosted a visitor from the Vatican who attended Cabrini Day of Prayer against human trafficking. Father Bikina is the undersecretary for the Congregation of Education in Rome, so he works at the Vatican. He's responsible for all education so higher education to kindergarten in the English-speaking world. What we try is, 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 is to take our responsibility to help, to encourage that our institutions can do what they are supposed to do in a better way and they fulfill their missions. But we believe that, that the Holy Spirit works not only in the Vatican or probably often earlier somewhere else than in the Vatican. So, what I could experience here, and this is, this is quite impressive for me, is that what you are doing is a very good expression of, of the Catholic mission. In November, the Vatican signed with a number of world religious leaders, representatives from the Jewish faith, the Islamic faith, the Baha'i faith, the Hindu faith, the Buddhist faith, to name a few, signed a document that said we want to have a first day, first international day of prayer and awareness against human trafficking. We are confronted with, with, with this reality and it's, it's not getting better. We, we see in Europe a lot of, of immigrants and I, I think there is a great responsibility also in, in the more developed countries because these things do not happen just occasionally. Human trafficking it's not an Islamic problem or a Jewish problem or a Christian problem. It's a human problem. 
So this is a concern that the world religious leaders have come about, and I think the day has a lot of potential moving forward. Bostonians have suffered from their third snowstorm in two weeks. According to NBC, 37 inches of snow had fallen, beating the 1996 record. Even a Boston meteorologist said it's just absurd at this point. The state of Alabama made the decision to allow same-sex marriages. According to ABC News, 51 of the 67 counties are not issuing marriage licenses to same-sex couples. Alabama Governor Robert Bentley was not silent on the issue. Bentley said he is disappointed in the decision, but will not penalize judges who issued licenses. And those were this week's big issues. Let's check in with Morgan Williams for your entertainment update. This past Sunday was the Grammy Awards of 2015, and there was a lot going on. We saw Beyonce perform, we saw Ariana Grande perform, and we even saw Kanye West and Rihanna sing together. One of the best performances for me was Lady Gaga and Tony Bennett's Cheek to Cheek performance. I really enjoyed seeing Lady Gaga without all the outrageous costumes and makeup. She looked absolutely beautiful, and to hear her voice in its entirety gave me goosebumps. I'm a huge jazz fan, and this performance made my night. Dress-wise for the Grammys, I think that Rihanna's poofy pink dress was amazing. It was different, and it definitely stood out from all the other dresses on the red carpet. But that's just Rihanna. Speaking of different, it seems like everyone was surprised by Madonna's dress wear. She was in a Givenchy short dress. It kind of looked like a maid's costume. It was black and peach, and I don't think it was the appropriate time for this outfit or the appropriate place. On the other hand, Iggy Azalea had on this blue Armani dress and a crown braid, and I fell in love with it. She looks so stunning and classy. Overall, the Grammys were a success with outfits this year. On more updated news, rumors are said that Bobby Christina was going off of life support on her anniversary day of her mother's death. But this is not true, according to E! News. Her father released a statement saying that they are investigating the steps to the hospitalization of his daughter, Bobby Christina Brown. There isn't any updates on the health of Ms. Brown, but stick with us and we'll keep you updated. February 14th is this Saturday. For those who might have forgotten, do students and staff have big plans for a romantic date or spending the day with their friends? Let's take a look at what some responses were. Aisles upon aisles are filled with everything red, white, and hot pink. Cuddly teddy bears, decadent chocolates, and sparkly cards have taken over local stores. It is almost Valentine's Day. How are community students and faculty planning on spending February 14th? What I'm doing for Valentine's Day is going down the sea aisle for polar bear plunge and I'm spending the day with my family and friends and hopefully two of my friends that I invited are able to make it. For Valentine's Day I'm going out to eat and then going to see Fifty Shades of Grey with my girlfriend. Reservations for my partner and I to go to dinner at, at an Indian restaurant in Media. And then on Sunday, we're going to do painting with the twist. And I'm going out for dinner with my boyfriend on Valentine's Day. Right. <laughs> Every year, my wife and I go out to dinner. Um, we try to get the grandparents to take our daughters uh, for the night, and they have a nice sleepover. And we get to go to a movie, have a dinner, and uh, we have a date night. Well, that was your entertainment update. Now let's head over to the news desk. <laughs> I was originally disappointed in Rihanna's dress choice at the Grammys. It didn't fit her at all. But why? I wouldn't have worn that to my freshman dance. Oh my goodness, no. I enjoyed her dress. I was watching Fashionless and they were talking about how great of a dress it was. No, I don't think so at all. Yeah, I, I did not like it. No. <laughs> we'll have to finish this debate later. That's all we have for you this week on Location News. Make sure you stay up to date with us on social media. Simply search Location News. Now let's see what's coming up next week on Location News. Have a great week, Cabrini. Next time on Location News. We get to know our mascot, Calvin the Cavalier. Then we see if our students are really prepared for life after college. Followed by coverage on the new budget cuts and what they mean for our students.